So you said you grew up in Carrollton. Um, so tell us about, you know, some of your early introductions into the streets. Like, what were some of the initial things you saw in the streets when you were young that kind of shocked you and stood out? Well, I was kind of raised up, you know, poor, you know, before I ended up, before my dad was like, you know, when we get a certain age, you know, he was gonna put us out at a certain, at a certain age. You know, not that I burned my bridges or any of my brothers, we burned our, our bridge. He just said, when we get a certain age, he was gonna put us out. So at the age of 15, that's when my dad put me out and I had to fend for myself, you know. Uh, didn't know how I was gonna get to no money, but you know, as a young kid coming up at the age of seven, you know, my dad did instill work in me. You know, I used to do little odd jobs, uh, cutting grass, cleaning gutters, you know, breaking leaves, you know. Do you do you remember that first week when uh, after your father put you out when you were 15? Like, do you remember what that first week was like? You know, some of your initial thoughts and feelings and kind of take us back <clears throat> to, you know, how you were looking at all that at the time. I was very hurt, you know, I was broke down. You know what I'm saying? Didn't know where I was gonna get my next meal from or how I was gonna survive on my own. You know, cause I was only a kid, you know, 15 years old. You know, I had all that on, on my back. So I just took medicine in my own hand. I was going to school. You know, I ended up quitting school in the eighth, in the eighth grade. You know, cause I had to bend for myself, you know, so I, Chose to get out there in the street. When you when you were um, back in like elementary school, what were some of your initial favorite subjects? Oh, math. Math. Math one of my favorite subjects in school. Why do you think it was math? Um, cause of course you know, hey, we love that money, right? Right. So you know, and then you know, math. What opportunities? What opportunities did you see in Carroll? Like, like, yeah. I could have, there was a lot of things I could have did to improve myself, you know, you know, one of the ways, you know, at the age when I got put out, you know, I wasn't old enough to get no job, you know, I'm coming from, you know, I know when I was in school at one time, uh, I think the seventh grade, eight, the eight, the eighth grade, you know, they used to have a little summer job for the little kids and stuff, you know, I used to go make a little odd money doing that there, right? But you know how we here, sometimes a little money ain't enough. You know what I'm saying? You know, I want to get a I want to get a job because you know, I've always had work. You know, I I've never shot away from no work. Anytime I did a a job for anybody, you know, I did the job well. When you when you were back in um like elementary school, you, what, what did you want to be? Like what was like, what were some of the things that you saw you were good at and when you was like, man, when I get older, I want to pursue this or when you when you think back then? I want to be a football star. You know, I grew up playing football. You know, we used to go to the oil field. Me and some of my homeboy, you know how you know how the neighborhood, your street and my street, we get together, we go to the oil field, the park. We go there and play tyke, you know what I'm talking about? We go there and get it in, you know. My favorite player then, you know, was Dan Marino. Okay. You know, that boy Dan Marino, you know, I used to be, <laughs> I used to be want to be a quarterback. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I was good at running too. Right. You know? So, you know, I came up watching them, them players, you know, like Hershey Walker, mm -hmm. you know, Bo, Bo Jackson, all them folk, you know what I'm saying? And I want to be that, I want to run like them. Right. So when we used to go to park all the time, you know, when I didn't want a quarterback, I, I'd get back there in the backfield. Right. Give me the ball. Right. I'm gone. So I said, shoot, they're going to be my, I, once I started running the ball, start scoring them touchdown, I said, shoot, I want to start playing school ball and all that and all that there. So that's what I did. I went ahead and got into the the uh playing like the recreation ball. Right. I was good at that there, you know what I'm saying? I, and I started out on defense. You know, they didn't too much have me on offense. What it was about 13, 14, playing nose guard for this team called uh Said JC Jets, who the orange team. You know, I'm somebody as a young as a young kid. Really? Harder, all the harder hit thing on my team. Well, 
I kind of got in the streets. Like I said, when I had to fend for myself and my dad had to put me up and I needed money, I needed to buy clothes, you know, so, so, take care of myself. So when you got in the streets, like, you know, how, how were you choosing to get the money? Was it like licks, you know, like, were you doing a little bit of everything? Like, what did you find yourself getting into for the most part? Well, drugs, you know what I'm saying? A lot of my homeboys out there, you know what I'm saying? Doing their thing, making their money. I was like, wonder how they were getting their fair money. You know what I'm saying? So. But so with these some of the older guys? Yeah, some older guys, you know what I'm saying? Back during my time when I was young, you know, you had the older, you had the older guys back that then. Making all the money on the white walls and all this stuff right here, you know what I'm saying? Driving the nice, the nice cars. What uh, neighborhood you I was on the west side of Carrollton. That's where right. I grew up at, on the, on the yeah. west side so, of Carrollton. So this before you came to Atlanta. This before, way before I came to it. Right, 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 right. Because we, because we going, we going to kind of lead to Atlanta. Okay, way before I came to it, to Atlanta. So. So now, okay, let's say, so you about between, what, about 15, about 15, 16? I was still 15 and six, uh, 16. I was out there in the streets. So I told one of my homeboys, man, I want to make some money, man. Like, just put that work in my hand. You know what I'm talking about? Told me, look, bring me this certain amount of money back. You know what I'm saying? So I knew then. When you, when you initially did it, how did you view how easy it was to get the money? Like, when you gave the person, you know, whatever the, the product was, oh, and you got the money back. man, when I, hey. How, how did you You know, see back during my time, you know, they had that crack cocaine, powder and all that stuff. So when they put that crack in my hand, when I made my first sale, I see how easy it was. I said, man, oh, this it right here. I'm going to take out. Right. This is going to be my job. My 20, this is going to be my job, my nine to five job every day. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Right. If not 24 hours, I'm going to get some sleep and get right back up and get right back to hustling. So, so back, so back when you were in these initial stages, like the potential consequences from any of this, did you really think about it at the time, or did you just more so look at the bread and was like, you know, I gotta make my, take a risk? Well, let me say that right here. Well, you know, anything that you're doing wrong, when it come, when it's going against the law, Georgia law or any law, you know, somebody you know, and you out there doing wrong, you out you out there hustling, you ain't getting that money the legal way. You know, it plenty of time I thought where, you know, every day that I was out there, every night that I was out there, in my mind, these folks ain't gonna catch me. Mm. I'm too small for them, you know what I'm talking about? Mm. Like, uh, I'm gonna run from them. If they even try to sneak up on me, it was plenty of instant I don't did that. They, they don't try to creep up on me. I don't tuck on running and everything. Well, yeah, they finally caught me later on, you know Hold what I'm on, saying? Hold on, we're going yeah, we gonna, we gonna to get to that. We're going to get yeah. that. So, okay, so now you're 15, 16. You 15 first and 16. Into it. So now let's go between, like, 17 and 20 years old. Like, now you you, you getting money now. You know, you you out of the house, but it was hard, but you kind of figuring it out. But you're getting a little deeper into the streets now, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you know, stuff is increasing. So tell us about that time when you transit. What age were you when you moved to Atlanta? But when I moved to, well, actually, I never moved to Atlanta. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, I did later on, you know what I'm saying? Like, now I'm 50 years old, right? You know, I just moved, I actually technically moved to Atlanta a year ago, really. Okay. But I always told folks I stayed in the city. Right. But, you know, because you want to keep folks thinking more with your right hand, more with your left hand than your right hand. Exactly. So, you know, so by me doing that, you know, I would have been a private person. You know, I didn't know. I didn't want folks to know my whereabouts. Right. So they, they got so used to me. To my boy, you stay in the city, don't you? Boy, you up in the, you up, you up in the city, ain't you? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, but that city like good. You know what I'm talking about? Right. But the whole time, I'm I'm right up under their nose the whole time. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm keeping the player like that, though. And but last year, my actually year that I decided to move to Atlanta, but I was already coming to Atlanta back in the '80s. No coming okay. all the traps. So now, all right. So now, take us through the history of Atlanta in the '80s in the streets with the traps. You know, the, the, the crack. You know, for the younger generation to learn, like, what was this environment like? What, 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 what areas of Atlanta were you like? Tell us what it was like back then. Well, the streets of Atlanta back there then was it was rough. You know, a lot of traps I went in. 
you know, leaving from my hometown, Carrollton, come to the city. You know what I'm talking about? You know, as a young as a, as a young kid trying to get to some money and getting a, and uh, getting a, and getting to work. You know, going to these traps like Born Home, Vine City, uh, uh, you name it, McDaniel Street, Honey Home, all these traps that I don't been in. I took chances going in each going in, going in these traps cause I could have got raw. They could have took my little hustling money, a real money, anything, you know what I'm talking about? But they seen a young kid had all this energy and their potential. He just wanted to make some money. Right. So, you know, I was like, shoot. So once they seen that in me, you know, they started loving me. Like this kid really about this kid really about that life. So, you know, I was doing this. Every time I go sell the work, come back and re-up and take it back down to where I'm, where, where I'm at until I was trying to get bigger and bigger. And, I, and it didn't matter who I sold the work for or nothing. You know what I'm talking about? Money was money to me, but the streets of Atlanta was dangerous back then. You know, you had to, All right. you just couldn't go on no trap unless you knew somebody. All right, so Paul, so what we're going to do is, is we're about to have the part two to this. And audience, y'all stay tuned.